Hey, this is John with LinuxNerd.Tech. I wanted to share a quick video with you that shows how to get started with Red Hat's hyper-converged infrastructure. Red Hat's HCI is the combination of Red Hat's virtualization and storage solutions so that we can combine the virtual machine hosting and the distributed HA storage on a single set of hardware. As the picture shows here, we're going to start out with a simple deployment of three nodes. And the goal is to have the virtual machines running on top of that in a highly available fashion with live migration so that there's no downtime to your applications. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is download our ISO image and we can download that from the redhat.com website. We go ahead and click on the customer link and then click on the download link where you'll find the Red Hat virtualization location. And you can even request an evaluation subscription. Log in with your username and password to access the downloads. When you get to the download page, what you'll find is a link to download the RevH installer image. And from that page, you'll see there are two downloads, one for the hypervisor image and one for the Rev Manager appliance. We want to download the hypervisor image because the Rev Manager appliance will be downloaded automatically for us later during the installation. We'll boot our virtual machine off of the CD and it has a quick menu to either test and install or simply get right into the installation. And we're greeted with the familiar Linux installation screens. We want to go through these menus such as choosing our keyboard, setting up our networks. Inside of here we want to make sure we provide a host name. We'll also want to double check the settings of our network connections. Specifically click on the general tab and make sure that the automatically connect to this network box is selected and provide the settings for your IPv4 addressing. In this case I'll be using static addressing 192.168.0.107 0.107 with a gateway and DNS and a search domain as well. You'll also see that I have a secondary network on this server. It's a good idea to have two networks in a hyperconverged environment, one network for storage replication and the other network for your virtual machines and live migration, etc. You're not limited to two, you can have as many as you'd like, but you'll see here I'm setting up a dedicated network for the storage. You'll also note that I do not supply a gateway, as this is a private network and there's no routing on it. So with the networking selected, we can go into date and time. You'll see in the top right hand corner that the network time protocol is turned on automatically. Choose your time zone to continue. And then with disk selection, I'm going to clear all of the disks that I'm not wanting to install my root partition on. And I'm going to check the box to make additional space available. If I had other partitions from previous operating systems, I could delete them and reclaim all of that space. With all of our choices having been selected, we can begin the installation and it will get right to work while we provide a few other bits of information, specifically the root password. If you choose a poor password like I've done, you'll have to hit the done button twice to proceed. I'll speed this up from here so that we don't have to sit and watch the entire installation. Just make note that the longest parts are going to be the installation of the RAM disk and performing some post installation tasks. When the installation is complete, click in the corner to reboot the system. So after the system finishes rebooting, you're greeted with the login prompt. Go ahead and log in with the same root password that you provided during the installation. And you'll see that there's a quick summary that shows that the node is in an OK state and it provides an IP address with a port number 9090 where we can log in to finish the installation. So we'll log out of the command line and we'll use our browser to go to the IP address and the port number that was provided. Log in again with our root name and password. And we're landed on the virtualization overview page. We're going to navigate to the system overview page in case we need to make any changes such as correcting a host name or correcting an IP address in the networking section. You can simply click on one of the interfaces and click on the IPv4 setting and change it from dynamic to manual or whatever needs to be done. For Red Hat's hyperconverged infrastructure, we want to download the Rev Manager appliance automatically. And in order to do that, we need to subscribe and register our system. So we provide our Red Hat login and password, which will automatically attach our subscription that provides for the virtualization host. You can see the dates of entitlement that are available. So I'll conclude the video here with pointing out that we're going to be moving into the hyperconverged window. 
I'm going to save the configuration options in this portion of it for the next video. So look for part number two coming soon. Thank you.